Hey, welcome to Totem Talks. Today we're going to be chatting about building positive communities and answering some of your travel dilemmas. On today's episode, we're talking about all things travel related, why we love to travel, how we plan our trips and how we travel on a budget. I'm Ava, I'm a student and travel blogger from Scotland and I love to travel in my summers and in my weekends and just whenever I can really. (laughs) I'm Holly, I'm a student and I also love traveling and sharing my traveling on social media. So when did you get the travel bug? I feel like lockdown was really what changed it for me. Like I turned 18 in lockdown and I was like ready to start just doing little trips with my friends after school and obviously we couldn't do anything. So when I went to uni, I realized like COVID was kind of coming to an end and I also had like free time, a little bit of money. So within like two months of being at uni, I booked my first solo trip to Edinburgh. And I was like, yeah, I just like want to start. And like, I feel like as soon as you do the first trip, it just, it goes downhill from there. You get addicted. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) What about you? When did you get the travel bug? I, in lockdown as well. So I used to watch like so many like travel YouTube. I was always like watching like all these videos online and stuff. And then I came across a channel called Flying the Nest. I don't know if you've heard of them. No. They're like Australian YouTubers. Okay. And I binge watched every single episode. Like I did it like for the whole of COVID. I just rewatched all their um, vlogs and stuff. And I think because they visited countries that weren't um, like on the radar as such more kind of underrated and like hidden gems and stuff and I think just like seeing all that just made me like I want to do that mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to travel and just like go to all these places that so where would you say is your like favorite place you've been to um I would say Cape Town South Africa like it was such a spontaneous decision like I mean the flight was booked at 7 a.m we flew the next day My God. it was <laughs> like unexpected so I didn't have any like expectations of it and you arrive and it's actually the most beautiful city like you're surrounded by the mountains you have the sea it has like everything there it was just such a cool thing and I really liked that I didn't know what I was doing when I arrived like I didn't have no expectations yeah exactly yeah like when I do the city break I normally like plan every hour whereas this one I turn up and I was like wow you're like what do I do now <laughs> literally I was like where am I but wow <laughs> what about you where's the best place you've been um I've got a few I'd say maybe Italy for one I think Italy's just so diverse like you've got like the mountainous regions you've got like the more city like the kind of old town and stuff I took um I went to the Cinque Terre mm-hmm. um in the beginning of the year and that was like gorgeous that was so nice and then I think my other place is Iceland I did like a road trip through the Iceland ring road literally my dream it's it was amazing it was so good we spent five days and it was just like seeing all the waterfalls and i'd love to go back it was amazing <laughs> i love that i'll need your itinerary definitely yeah i'll send you over <laughs> thank <laughs> you <laughs> what would you say is like the best thing you gain from traveling i think definitely the people you meet i think traveling lets you meet like the most like like-minded people to you um i've met some of my best friends from traveling actually the majority of my friends i've like met from they're all over the world um, yeah, and then just all the experiences you get to do and stuff. What about you? Yeah, I'd definitely say the same. Experiences, like things that I can't do just staying at home. Like, you know, I will go away and be like, oh yeah, I was on a beach with penguins or I got my scuba diving license. Yeah. Like you can't just do that staying at home. It's the best stories you get to tell. Exactly. You'll it's come so home and fun. you'll be like, yeah, this happened. And everyone back home's like, what? <laughs> like not to be morbid, but I know that if I did like die tomorrow, I'd feel like, I've made the best of at least the few years that I've had. So that's what I feel like it's one of my favorite things is making the best of life. Yeah, definitely. Rather than just like letting it And making all the memories that you can like say to your grandkids. Like, literally. Let you know I just did that. (laughs) Like when I get those photo albums out and they're probably like, I'm not interested, but I am. (laughs) I print off all my photos as well. I put them on the scrap because it's so nice to just like flick through and be like, oh, you remember when I did that? Literally, I keep every ticket. Like everything is put in a book. (laughs) I've got like a whole folder of like just receipts and like random like ticket stubs and so one of my favorite travel memories is that I was sitting in my uni flat with my two friends and we we're just wanting so we wanted to go skiing and we're looking online and there's only like one like indoor ski club in Scotland but it was closed so as you do we're like okay like what um, places abroad can we go skiing <laughs> so we're like just Naturally. looking yeah just looking on sky scanner and the flights to go to like i don't know italy or indoor like the ski places were quite expensive and then we're like okay we need to like hire the ski gear so it ended up being quite expensive and then one of my friends was like oh we can go to like um gran, gran canaria for like 20 pounds and we're like i was like i'm free this weekend are you free this weekend and it was like totally last minute and then we just ended up booking the tickets and then we're like went 
no plans. We ended up going this really good hike and like got this, oh, it was amazing. It was such a like last minute, like spontaneous holiday, but it's like, why not? If you have a free weekend and the flights are cheap, literally just do it like why not <laughs> exactly it's so much better than a night out I think yeah I feel like I have a s- similar like favorite travel memory that it was in my first year of uni and I'd just come back from Edinburgh like that day like got off the flight came home was speaking to my one of my flatmates who'd have been to Barcelona the same weekend and we were about to like people were speaking about like are we going back into COVID like is there going to be another lockdown over Christmas and it was the Black Friday weekend. And I know this because we sales. were like, <laughs> Sky Scanner, we got five pound tickets to Venice, like five pound each way. Five um, pounds? Five pound, like 10 pound in total, there and back. Oh my God. And so we were like, yeah, let's just book it because realistically, if we go back into lockdown and we can't fly, like we lose five pound. Yeah. We booked a refundable Airbnb that was like 20 pound a night, which in Venice is unheard of. Yeah, that's. And we ended up going, the flight was empty. Like we had rose to ourselves and on Ryanair, you know that that's a luxury. Yeah. And so we get there, like the best memories. It was just so nice, just wandering around Venice. It was empty. The weather was I'd lovely. Love to go to Venice as well. It was just so good. And like we didn't expect it to actually ever happen. So it was again like a, wow, we're actually here. You went in with no expectations and then it was like all exactly. expectations met. I feel like when you have expectations of a place, like, Paris is a really good example of this. Everyone goes and they're like, Paris syndrome is such a thing because you arrive and you're expecting this magical thing and you realize actually it's just a city. Whereas if you go with no expectations, I feel like that's when you fall in love with the place properly. That was me when I went to LA. So I did Camp America last summer and we went all around the um, US. One of my favorite destinations was Chicago. And we went into that with no expectations at all. Absolutely loved it. I definitely moved there. But we went to LA and I think it's such like a built up like idea. Like it's like LA, it's amazing. It's all this. And it was like really like, it wasn't great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we went to like the Griffith Observatory for sunset. That was amazing. But then apart from that, you're like walking down the street and it's just like dirty or there's like, and you're just like, this is not what I expected. So like if you go in with like all these like hopes and dreams, it's like, it doesn't really, you don't meet it all the time. But yeah, exactly. going in with like no expectations at all, that's when works And out I feel better. like sometimes, I'm not saying like you shouldn't do tourist destinations, but like some, some things get hyped up so much that you don't have like a genuine experience. Yeah. It's so, like we went to Maya Bay Beach this year in Thailand, obviously one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, but to like get it at a quiet time, we like arrived on the island, like we were like some of the first people there you at like 7 like, a.m. Yeah. But like the sun wasn't even up, so you didn't have like the sun over the water and you only get like an hour time slot. You can't even go in the water and there's just people everywhere, even at 7 a.m. Yeah. It's like, but I mean, like it was a good experience, but I feel like it wasn't authentic, which I really think you get when you don't have expectations of things. You just stumble across something. Yeah. But I think with that sense as well, like a lot of destinations that you see on social media or on like Instagram and TikTok, it's like, it really is expectation versus reality. Oh, 100%. Like you go and like you see videos and it's like completely like dead. It's quiet. Like nobody's there. You've got like the beach all to yourself. And it's like, and then you go and it's like packed. And then you have to like pay for like all these hidden costs, like to go in the water and to do like all, like just like things that you just didn't, yeah, it no, wasn't definitely. on your radar before. And you're like, this is not what was like online. <laughs> like social media is a highlight reel. Like you have yes. to remember that when you're traveling that 100%. you'll see things and no, no one's showing them carrying a, like a 40 litre backpack, backpack up a like, full <laughs> flight, of, flight of stairs on the way to the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Would you say that travel has helped you build a community? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that, like, as I said before, like traveling helps you meet like the most like similar people to you. Like you're all on the same web- wavelength. You all like want to do the same things in life. And it's good because throughout traveling, you meet people from like all around the world. It's good and bad in some cases. Like Mm -hmm. it's good because it means that you always have a place to stay. Like you can like go down and see your friend or like if you go to a country, like I've got friends in Australia, I've got friends in the Netherlands. Like if I go there, I've always got a place to stay. But then it's hard because then I'm like, alone on like the weekend and like, hey, are you free tonight? But it's like, I can't really say like, do you want to come over? Cause they're they're in Australia. (laughs) Like, what about you? Um. I would say in some ways I've built a community, a very small one. I met my boyfriend very early on into uni and now we travel together. Like since I met him, it's just the two of us. So when I travel, I don't really socialize. I just like spend it with him. But in some ways it is like my own little community. Yeah. But even when I was solo traveling before I met him, I went to Edinburgh and Madrid 
and I was in the hostel and I just didn't speak to anyone. <laughs> I was like, I want my alone time. Like I'm here away from everyone. But sometimes it's good to do that though, because then you get to like experience it on your own. And I think you learn a lot about yourself when you travel. Oh, 100%. I feel like I've learned a lot through being by myself. And you also do things that you genuinely want to do rather yeah. than feeling like maybe someone you've just met has suggested something. So you say you have to do it. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, oh, like certain things I don't like doing, certain things I love doing like I don't really drink so in some ways not meeting people and feeling like I had to go out and socialize afterwards was nicer and I can just be in bed by nine and yeah. wake up for the sunrise <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that's the good thing about solo travel is that you you can like do it on your own itinerary like you don't need to like rely on someone obviously it's amazing to travel with other people but when you travel with other people it's a sense of like they want to do this so you're like okay okay I'll do this for you and then you do this for me whereas when you're solo traveling you can just like be like wake up and like I want to do this today or you can wake up and be like I don't want to get out of bed until like 2 p.m. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> Definitely. I feel like there's pros and cons of like solo traveling, but as well as like traveling with friends. Like when you travel with people you already know, like you obviously build amazing memories with them, but then it's very hard to be like, yeah, I don't want to do that with you. Yeah. Whereas when you're by yourself, obviously you do, like you're on your own schedule. Yeah, but I guess that's good with you and your boyfriend because like you probably know each other quite well, so you can like bounce off each other. And also like, Imagine that. Imagine like when you're old and like have your grandkids and you've got like all these memories That's to say my like, dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we've been to like all these places together. We've done so many cool things. And having someone like that to like experience it with as well is just amazing. It is so nice when you like think of a place and like it makes you think of the person. Like yeah, I really like yeah. that. That's really cute. <laughs> we're just gonna go for a little ad break now, but when we get back, we're gonna be answering all your travel dilemmas. Welcome back. We are now going to go through some travel dilemmas that you have sent in. We're going to pick our favourites and go through and hopefully help you out with some advice. So first of all, what do you think are your favourite travel destinations for students on a budget? I would say I've got two. I'd say either Prague and the Czech Republic. Um, so if you're like into more of the nightlife scene, um, they have a really like cheap drinks. There's also like a lot of history in there. There's the old town. There's quite a lot to do. Um, so yeah, I'd say definitely Prague. Or Milan in Italy, mainly because I feel like from wherever in the UK you are, flights to Milan are really cheap. Like you can get them like you've got like a few destinations are always just going to be like cheaper flights, and Milan's just one of them. So I definitely go for Milan. Yeah, I agree. I did Milan in first year because cheap flights. <laughs> and even like Lake Como, which is mm -hmm. near Milan. So Lake Como is like class is like a really expensive like destination i got return flights to milan for 30 pounds and then a four pound train to lake como like it doesn't need to be expensive if you know where to look it doesn't like have to be and even if you just go for the day and as long as like you're happy to put the time into the traveling like you don't need to get a taxi like yeah. public transport is your best friend definitely 100%. Yeah. so the next dilemma is do you have any advice for students who want to travel whilst also studying um I mean, I'm very lucky with my timetable that I'm only in two and a half days a week. So that if you amazing. have a timetable like that, use the rest of the week. If you don't, like student life, we're in uni maybe 24 weeks of the year, I think I have classes. Your summer will start in about April and just make the best of it. Like particularly before that peak summer holiday season starts, yeah. get a flight and make the best of like January as well because places are really cheap in January yeah kind of you know sometimes I've submitted an essay on the way back from an airport but <laughs> you know you kind of learn that you can get things done while also making the best of traveling yeah I think it's all about balance like if you're like kept up to date with your uni stuff and then if you've got a free weekend just like get flights late on a Friday night and come back late on a Sunday night and exactly. then like, you've got like a few days there you know and I think definitely like summers as well like you're never once you like leave uni and like go into like, maybe a full-time job or something you're not gonna get like a few months off every single year to travel so definitely make the most of that how do you find cheap flights and hotels when you're traveling sky scanner <laughs> of course <laughs> i think we were both on the same page with that one sky scanner is like the best way to look for flights and also so sky scanner have an option where it's like an everywhere option so you can select the destination you're flying from and then leave the destination you're traveling to blank and just put everywhere. And then in the month, you can do like the whole month of October, say. So you can choose the airport you're flying from and then look for the cheapest places to fly to from that airport within the whole month or something. And then it can come up with like ridiculously cheap flights. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, Venice for five pound was exactly. incredible. That's insane. 
that was exactly through Skyscanner. I think I've got a lot of flights for having like 30 pounds return. That's like my kind of average. But then it kind of like, I get spoiled almost because then I see a flight for like 50 pounds like return. I'm like, oh, that's so expensive. Oh no, I'm literally <laughs> the same. Cause Stansted is my local airport. So everything is cheap there. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm looking at something out of Gatwick, I'm like 40 pound return. Like, like that's insane. I know, a bit steep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say I'm like always last minute. <laughs> I think I am too. I think you get like, it's like that window that if you book in the, like a lot in advance, it's cheap. And then if you book like midway, it gets more expensive. Mm -hmm. And then if you book like really like close to the time, then it's like really cheap. I feel like you also have to know when the deals are coming again. Like Black Friday, yeah. turn your like Ryanair, EasyJet, yes. turn those notifications <laughs> on because they'll send you an email with the deals on. Yeah. And the and same boxing with day like sales as well. Yeah, Boxing Day and like the post summer when they're trying to like promote their winter destinations, yeah. like winter sun destinations. Yes, yeah. Make the best of those. Yeah, hundred percent. So the next dilemma is I'd love to go on a solo trip, but I'm a bit nervous. Any tips or advice? I would say one of my favorite things is Hostel World has a feature where you can like be added into a group chat like a few days before you're going and you can literally see like who's gonna be in your destination at the yeah. time. So you can in advance like know who is going to be in that country even if you don't know anyone like you're not going with friends you can like get an idea of maybe meet someone for, up for a drink or a dinner like anything like that and that group chat is really helpful when you're like at the airport and you're like oh my goodness what if no one wants to speak to me like you can do that in advance even Facebook groups as well. Mm -hmm. I'm on quite a lot of like, even if you're like you're a solo female going and you're quite nervous about that, there's so many solo female travel groups. There's so many like um, both genders, all genders, like travel groups that you can go on and you can just even put a message on there and say, hey, like, is there anybody in this destination at this time? And you'll find a lot of the time, a lot of people will be like, yeah, I'm there. Or even if they're not, they'll be like, yeah, like give you like lots of recommendations and stuff. So I think Facebook groups are definitely the way to go and hostel world. Yeah, 100%. I feel like free walking tours when you first arrive in a 100%, city, yeah. one of the best ways because you're going to meet people that are in that place, probably so they're traveling or maybe in a couple of small groups. Yeah. And then you get recommendations. Like they will always tell you, this is the local food you should try. This is where you should go later that we didn't have time to cover. Yeah. Like that's a really great way to get your bearings and to kind of meet other people that are looking to also get their bearings. And a lot of hostels do that as well. Like if you just go to a hostel and then they'll usually have like a board up or they'll have some sort of like Instagram page where they'll put all their events on mm -hmm. and a lot of them like ma majority of them I'd say do free walking tours and it's a great way as you say to say city and to meet lots of people that are just like in the same boat as you so and it's free so and it's free <laughs> <laughs> I really want to travel after uni but I feel pressure to go straight into a career what do I do travel <laughs> <laughs> just travel like I think once you finish uni you depending like if you go into uni later or not but either way like you're gonna be young I think use this time this is the best time to travel you've got a few years out there's no rush to go into a career I, d I wouldn't say I'd say just just do it yeah I agree. One, <laughs> one of my favorite phrases is money money comes back time doesn't time doesn't 100% and like I you don't want to get to like retirement and realize that you haven't done anything because you're not going to do the things you want to do now when you're retired like yeah you can go on like a nice little weekend break yeah. but it's not the same like I was speaking to my grandparents last night I was telling them about like some of the trips I have planned and they were like just make the best of it yeah. like take every opportunity do it while you're young because like Never we can't be go and do again. that again yeah. yeah exactly make the most of your time like while you have it I agree 100 you don't want to like rush into a career and some people like that's great like they're very career driven stuff but if like you're unsure you don't want to like you're not going to regret traveling 100%. You're not going to go on an amazing trip, meet so many new friends, make the best memories and then be like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Like, you're not like, it won't happen. I agree. And like all your experience or your like your degree or whatever you have is still behind you. You're never going to lose that. Just yeah, you'll still you always have that out. qualification. And some like interviewers will actually ask you, what do you do for fun? Like, what is your favorite holiday? Because they want to know that you have a work life balance. Yeah. So I feel like in some ways they will look at that in a favorable way because see that you value your personal time as well as your career. And I think a lot of companies even look for you to have traveled because mm -hmm. it means that like, I think traveling really matures you as a person. I think the most maturing I've done is just been like by going on trips and the most life lessons I've learned is like by traveling. You learn so much more traveling than in a classroom. 100%. I will stand by that every day. Yeah, definitely. So the next dilemma is my friends don't want to travel to the places I want to go to. Do you have any advice aside from going solo? If you're not comfortable with going solo, unlike just being by yourself, 
you can book on like group trips they basically offer them to anywhere in the world yeah and there you'll meet other people that are solo traveling that also want to gain a bit of confidence and maybe like if you're looking to do like a big Southeast Asia trip, you do your first like two weeks in a group, you're going to meet people in that trip that 100%. then are going to stay on and you can make the plans with them. Yeah. Or like you've done Camp America, so I yeah. feel like that's a good Camp, one. Camp America, I did this, I've done it for two years now. And it's like, I think it's one of the best ways to meet friends. You like everyone there is like so like minded, you make like the best experiences. And then once you finish Camp America, majority of the time is that you'll meet a group of friends and then you'll go and you'll travel to all these different places and everything but I think when you travel solo you never really travel solo Mm -hmm. like you're always going to meet people you're always going to like have that group like community sense like it's never like a hundred maybe if you want it to be (laughs) <laughs> you and your boyfriend <laughs> I know but even, even like that. when I was traveling solo in Madrid and I didn't want to speak to anyone I yeah. was just like sat eating my hummus and bread or whatever it was and, and some guy came up to me and was like do you like do you want to like do something yeah. like hi like do they just speak to you even if you're like not approachable yeah. person the opportunity is always there and like if you're in hostels and everything like you always get people coming up to you and like even if you're not that confident to go out and speak to somebody 99% of the time somebody will come speak to you 100% even if you're sat there like by yourself like headphones in someone will still come up <laughs> <Yeah>. to you <laughs> you've experienced it in a I, I know shop. this <laughs> I've learned <laughs> I want to plan a weekend trip but I have no idea where to go do you have any suggestions I think the good thing about living in the UK is that you can go anywhere in Europe for like on a budget yeah I would say, like, just put Skyscanner everywhere for the weekend you want to go. Find the cheapest one. That was, doesn't matter if you've heard of the place or not, just go. That was literally my, like, for a lot of places, I'd be like, okay, I want to go away somewhere this month. I don't know where. And the reason, the way I'd figure out how of where to go is that just wherever it was cheapest. Literally. Because, like, I feel like when you become older, maybe you're not necessarily going to, like, when you have a family, you're not just going to be traveling to, like, the cheapest city break. Yeah. So make the best of it now because I feel like places you don't expect, like we've already said, will always surprise you and you'll find hidden gems anywhere. Yeah. And the places that, like, are cheap to fly to as well, like, they're so underrated. Like, you'll go there and, like, have, like, you're like, I never knew this was here. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So do you have any suggestions for places to go in the UK? Okay, I go to uni in London, so maybe I'm a bit biased, but I think everyone needs to do a London trip. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to do the touristy thing. There is so much. I've been there for two years now. I'm still exploring, like, there's so many parts of London I've never been to, which is crazy to say. Yeah. And so it's actually, city. like, fun to do the tourist stuff. Like, I worked on the river cruises over the summer. Yeah. And, like, you learn so much. <laughs> even though I live there, I'm like, wow, that's so interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I do think London is, like, a really good one. Obviously, it's expensive to stay. Otherwise, like, I did Bath in my first year for just like a day trip, like got the National Express at like five in the morning. <laughs> but it was really fun to just explore somewhere that I didn't really know. Yeah, I would say Edinburgh as well. That was my first solo yeah. trip. <laughs> Edinburgh is really nice. It's a really nice city, really friendly, really safe. Um, and just like a good, there's quite a lot to do as well, I'd say. I feel like every city has hidden gems in it. Yeah. Like I would also say if you have friends from school or something that they'll be spread across the country go and stay with all of them mm-hmm. like i um, reading week of my first year I went around all my friends I was like I'm coming for a night and I would just hop between <laughs> cities to see like explore their side of uni yeah because it's so different to your own yeah and I think one place I'd really like to go to but I haven't been yet I'd really like to go to Brighton have you been yeah because it's like know. a quick train drive yeah. from London yeah. so I've been quite a lot I really want to try go there I think that might be on the radar for next year <laughs> it's a nice day yeah. definitely <laughs> What country would you visit again? Definitely Iceland. I think it's very expensive, which is why I haven't gone back recently. So when I first went, it was actually a school trip. So it was kind of like much cheaper. We did it as a big group of us, but it was like amazing. But I really want to go back and just like hire like a camper van and just like road trip the whole like, but it's quite expensive, which is why I think I'd leave that until a few few years down the line. But also Italy. Mm-hmm. I think Italy, there's so many different places you can go to. I've only been to like a few cities throughout, but I'd love to go to Venice. I'd love to go to like Tuscany and everything, like Dolomites and all that. I feel like Italy, you're never done no. there. Like yeah. you can, and you can always go back to the places you've been as well. Yeah. And it's always like a different like experience whenever you go. It's like so diverse, I think. Yeah, 100%. What would you say? I think Thailand, like I went for, I think we were only there for like 10 days because it was just like after uni. And in 10 days, you don't see anything. 
Yeah. So there's like an entire country that I haven't been Where's to. Where's Thailand? I feel like you do need like a month or two months. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And it was like, I, cause I did think, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go because I know we can only like scratch the surface. Yeah. But I was like, at the same time, I'm not going to miss out on this opportunity. Yeah. So we went and it was really cool to explore. And now I know like, I'm not necessarily interested in going back to Phuket. I didn't really like it. It was a bit yeah. too touristy. I love Phi so you know Island, for next time, which yeah. I feel like is controversial. People don't really like it other than the Maya Bay Beach tour. Really? But I did my scuba license there. So that was the best experience. We stayed for six days. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, So I'm like, I would 100% go there. But like all the north of Thailand, I would love that. Yeah, I think... I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I don't think. <laughs> um, Do you have any tips for staying safe while you're traveling? I'd say the main thing is that if you have an iPhone at least, um, turn on your Find My iPhone. Because if your like, iPhone's like linked with your family and everything, then they can like always like kind of have an update of where you are. I remember I was, in, um, I was in New Orleans and I have my Find My iPhone linked to my parents. And like I find it quite hard to like, I mean, it's not that difficult, but to text my parents like every single day while yeah. I'm traveling. So I think by this point, I hadn't texted my parents in a few days. And obviously they like just checked, find my iPhone to see where I am. And at this point I was doing a swamp tour in New Orleans. <laughs> so they didn't know where I was. And then they checked, find my iPhone. And I was in the middle of a swamp in New Orleans, like the outback of New Orleans. And then they were just like, what? I was like, it was, <laughs> my mom called me. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, why? She's like, oh my God, I thought you just got like something happened and you're like got your body dumped in a swamp in New Orleans <laughs> I'm like no I'm, I'm okay I'm still here sorry <laughs> but yeah I think definitely that's a good thing just for like back home's reassurance and then just keep your wits about you I think yeah I feel like gut instinct is the the biggest thing you always trust your gut yeah like if you wouldn't do it at home I feel like don't do it yeah abroad like living in London it's almost like solo traveling sometimes like when I go out and I'm exploring by myself so I feel like you become very aware of people like on the tube I know if someone's sketchy and they come up and sit next to me I will literally do the whole like run into another tube carriage if I feel yeah. uncomfortable like I would never walk around by myself at night if I mm -hmm. didn't feel like it was a busy area or there people yeah. where place where other travelers were yeah because I feel like you know it's just sensible things like you know how to keep yourself safe in reality like don't question your instincts yeah and I think another thing is that if you're like in a city that you're not fully like comfortable with and you're like using your maps on your phone if you have your earphones yeah just put like one earphone in and then just listen to the directions on your phone instead of like walking around like with your maps like oh where am I going because then it'll just like draw attention to you whereas I mean it's not like it won't draw a huge amount of attention to you but it's just like if you want to like you're like worried about that Mm -hmm. just put one earphone in and just listen to the directions and then just like follow along because then it like you act like a local you kind of know where you're going definitely I feel like another one is keep your valuables like close to your body not on the outside of your bag yeah one of my biggest fears is to lose my passport because I mean you know I that's couldn't. obviously yeah. quite bad <laughs> so I will always keep it like either in like the laptop pocket of my bag or yeah. if I have like um, a crossbody bag like on the inside pocket yeah so it's not if someone opens my bag they can't grab the things that actually are gonna the cause me issues yeah. yeah and a lot of backpacks as well they have like on like the kind of inner bit like of your back they have a pouch so you can put in like your your wallet your passport your documents and stuff so it means that like if somebody was to go in from the outside your backpack they won't have access to all that stuff as well or so. you're gonna feel it if someone's like yeah. trying to open that like <laughs> next to your bag, crawl into your bag. <laughs> <laughs> we hope we've helped answer your dilemmas and highlighted the importance of helping each other out but before we go what advice would you give to your younger self I feel like, like I said earlier, money comes back, time doesn't. Like, I 100%. mean, don't put it in yourself in a position where you can't like afford food or accommodation, whatever yeah. it is, but like live while you're young. Definitely, like, yeah. You're never going to regret doing something. You will always regret not doing something. Yeah, 100%. Anything else? Or did you just agree? <laughs> no, I'd say as well, like, don't care what other people think. <laughs> I, mm. I think I used to be so like self-conscious about like, posting on social media and doing like all that kind of stuff and I'm just like I like just post what you want like express express what you want like if you've gone on a cool trip post it like 
100%. I feel like my social media is almost for me more than it is for anyone yeah, else. Yeah, like, 100%. I think I've realized that in the past few years. It's literally like a scrapbook, like a digital scrapbook. Yeah. I love that. It's like all my travel posts. I'm just like, <laughs> dump, dump, dump. <laughs> literally, like my Instagram highlights. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so like nice as well to make like aesthetic highlights as well. <laughs> 100%. If you want to find the tribe of your own, head to Totem Talks and take the quiz to be matched with discounts perfectly suited for you. We really hope you've enjoyed this episode and be sure to keep an ear out for more Totem Tribe Talk. Be sure to head to We Are Totem on Instagram and TikTok for some more updates. Thank you for listening. I hope you found something we've said useful. <laughs> something we've said. <laughs> something we've said. <laughs> At least one thing. <laughs>